Today we're gonna explore the most adventurous corner of Costa Rica, the Usa Peninsula and the area around Drake Bay. The Usa Peninsula lies at the very southwest corner of Costa Rica, at the border to Panama. It's one of Costa Rica's most remote destinations, and also features some of Costa Rica's most undisturbed nature. And that's saying quite a lot, considering all the national parks that can be found all over Costa Rica. Even getting to the Usa Peninsula is a little bit of an adventure. You either have to take a boat through mangrove rivers to get here, or you have to drive on dirt roads and even cross rivers on the way, or you have to take a plane. The last part is a little bit cheating though, so I recommend taking the boat. Drake Bay is a small town on the Usa Peninsula, with a few hotels and restaurants, but uh, not really all that much else to see. For some reason, I love dusty little tourist towns like this. There's something refreshing about the closeness to nature, maybe. I'm technically a little bit outside of Drake Bay itself right now, but it's close enough. Drake Bay was named after Sir Francis Drake, who they believed used this as a port before attacking the Spanish in the 16th century. This is also the supposed location of a pirate treasure, but I haven't found any treasure so far, even though I'm staying at a hotel called the Pirate Cove. Speaking of pirates, Sir Francis Drake was considered a hero by the British, but a pirate by the Spanish. He captured a lot of silver and gold from the Spanish, and he did in fact bury a treasure on a beach in 1572, but that was in Panama, south of here. Although this place is absolutely gorgeous, most people don't come to Drake Bay just for Drake Bay itself. This town is the stepping stone to two of the main attractions of the area, Corcovado National Park and Isla del Caño. As almost everything in Drake Bay, a trip to Corcovado starts with a long but beautiful boat ride. And if you're lucky, you can see some humpback whales on the way as well. Corcovado National Park was established in 1975 and covers an area of 424 square kilometers. This is Costa Rica's biggest national park and the only park where you can see the largest land animal in Costa Rica, the tapir. Amazingly enough, we found a couple of sleeping tapirs lounging around by the beach. Our very knowledgeable guide just told me that the reason we saw two tapers is that it's a baby and its mother. They are very solitary animals otherwise. Oh, and they're related to the rhinoceros. Now I know, and you know as well, I guess. You can also see different large cats here, like ocelots and jaguars, but uh, yeah, I haven't seen any so far. Inside Corcovado, you can see one of the few remaining lowland tropical forests in the world. Lowland forests are where logging historically took place first, so there are very few remaining places like this. As of 2014, all visitors to the park must be accompanied by official guides, and special permits are needed if you want to spend the night here. I'm not doing that. Instead, we left at 6 a.m. from Drake Bay to make it a full day at Corcovado. Let me show you some things from this park. Apparently you have to be really careful about these thorns. Not the thorns themselves, but ants that cover these thorns. The ants are collecting the sugary stuff that's secreted from the plants and they get really pissed off if they think that you're trying to steal the sugar. They bite. 
They call this tree a tourist tree. I don't see why. It turns red and shed its bark. Hmm, maybe there's some resemblance. This one isn't just one tree, it's actually at least six strangle ficuses who have uh, killed the host tree and now it's taken over by ficuses. It almost smells a little bit spicy in this part of the forest. I can't even begin to imagine what that could be. Nice, a little crocodile. The first one so far in Costa Rica. Probably the only one, I guess. There's a lot of monkeys here. So far we've seen squirrel monkeys and spider monkeys. Supposedly you can see howler monkeys and white-faced capuchins as well. Those are the four types of monkeys you can find in Costa Rica. Some of the unexpected <laughs> dangers here is all the mud. <laughs> I can't imagine what people were thinking who brought white shoes here. And of course there's a lot of knickknacks to buy at the ranger station. What else would you expect? I have a feeling the tide has turned. What happened to all the water? Guess you forgot to bring sunscreen. Oh well, I hear that sunscreen is bad for the environment anyway. Isla del Caño is an island 20 kilometers from Drake Bay. And to get to the island you have to take a boat, of course, it's an island. But why do you want to go to Isla del Caño at all to begin with? Well, there's one big reason, diving. Costa Rica isn't exactly famous as a diver's paradise. And although it's filled with corals and marine life, it's often outshined by dive sites in neighboring countries. But there are some exceptions. Isla del Caño is one of them. This space is often recommended by other diving enthusiasts, so I decided that it's well worth a special detour just to see what you can find here. And what can you find here? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you a little bit. If you're not satisfied with Corcovado National Park and diving Isla del Caño, there's a lot more you can do in Drake Bay. Hiking, kayaking, multi-day wildlife tours, there's a lot of activities to choose from. You can also go on a boat and look for dolphins or whales or do sports fishing. But I don't really approve of the last one, because in my view, fish should be looked at and not fished at. If all of that sounds like too much work, then you can simply relax on the beach and enjoy a vacation in one of the most undisturbed corners of Costa Rica. Most people who come to the Usa Peninsula come via the town of Sierpe. This is the Sierpe Dock and I didn't really have much time to explore the town of Sierpe because my boat is leaving pretty soon. But I heard that there's a museum here where you can see pre-Columbian stone spheres in a place called Farm 6. Yep, weird name. If you're interested in the indigenous people of Costa Rica, then that's a place you might want to visit. And if you really are interested, there are a lot of museums in San Jose that display pre-Columbian art and artifacts. The roads on the Osa Peninsula are pretty atrocious, so most people recommend that you take a boat from Sierpe Dock to Drake Bay. It's almost a little adventure by itself to ride on these little boats through mangrove rivers to get to your destination. Once you arrive at Drake Bay, you're gonna need somewhere to stay. You could stay close to the town itself, and that will give you some more options when it comes to restaurants. 
but I chose to stay at a place called the Pirate Cove, a little bit outside of town. To be honest, I mostly chose this place because they have a dive shop at the hotel, and that makes it really easy to book the diving trip to Isla del Caño. But it turns out that the location itself is absolutely gorgeous, and they were really helpful with arranging my trip to Corcovado as well, so I'm really happy about my choice. As always, there are cheaper and much more expensive options at Drake Bay, so you'll have to decide what works best for your budget. But this turned out great for a three-star vagabond. Well, there you have it. That was a quick look at the Usa Peninsula, one of the most undisturbed corners of Costa Rica. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day.